Hello and welcome to Guiding Bold. I'm Jessica and today we're going to talk about how to tumble and polish agates in a rock tumbler. So first a quick overview of the tumbling process. So when you're tumbling agates there are typically four steps you need to go through in the polishing process. Your rocks will start at the coarse grit and go all the way through and this entire process will take a number of weeks. You typically spend anywhere from two to four weeks with the coarse grit, approximately one week with the medium grit, one week with the fine grit, and a final week with the polish. Let's talk about the materials you'll need. First thing, of course, is a rock tumbler. There are two types of rock tumblers. The first is a vibratory tumbler, which is basically your barrel sits in one place upright and then it vibrates. The second type of rock tumbler is the one I prefer, and that's the rotary rock tumbler. And here, the barrels rotate on their side, causing the rocks to tumble over on themselves. The other things you'll need are your four stages of grit and polish. The first stage is a silicone carbide. It's about a 60-90 grit. The medium grit is a silicone carbide that's at a 120-220 grit. The fine grit or pre-polish is an aluminum oxide at 500 grit. And the final is an aluminum oxide polish level. The other thing you will need, of course, is rocks to tumble. I happen to live on beautiful Lake Superior, so I have access to tons of agates that I get to go out and find and then pick. This set of agates here has already gone through the first and second stages of tumbling. These rocks here are completely raw and have not done any tumbling yet, but once the rocks go through all four stages, oops, they're gonna come out nice and clean and polished and look like these. The other thing you might want to consider is having um, filler for your barrels because your barrels need to be filled about two thirds full with the material to ensure that one, there's enough space for the rocks to tumble, but two, not too much space because if there's too much space, the rocks could actually clink against each other too hard and it can cause cracking or fractures on them. So if you don't have enough smaller rock to fill up your barrels, or as you're moving through the stages, you begin to lose material as they polish themselves, you can have ceramic or plastic beads to use as filler. And these things can be reused. You'll see here that I have a bag that's marked as stage three pre-polished so that I can use these again in the future. It's also helpful to have measuring spoons for measuring out your, your grits. I just reuse plastic spoons and you'll see I have them labeled. So I keep them separate. It's also nice to have access to an outside garden hose and a bucket. And those pieces will come in play when we are moving in between the stages and checking our rocks out. So you'll see those in a few minutes. But the other item that's handy when you're cleaning off the rocks is a kitchen colander. You know, I picked this one up from, I think, Goodwill for less than a dollar. So pick one up that is only for your rocks. Make sure once it's used for your rocks, you're not taking it back to the kitchen and using it there. Some other helpful information about picking out a rock tumbler. You want to be mindful of the amount of material you have to tumble. So I use the Lortorn 33B model and each of these barrels is a three pound barrel. And I like this size here because again, you're gonna have to fill it two thirds full with rocks or filler materials. So it's, it's a nice size for tumbling without being too big because the bigger it is, again, the more filler or material you have to, to tumble. What I like about the two barrels of the 33B model is that allows me to have two batches going at once. I always save one barrel for the first and second stages, the coarser grits, and the second barrel for the third and fourth stages, or the finer grits. 
And even though you can use a single barrel and clean it out really well in between each of the stages, I just like designating barrels to the different halves of the tumbling stages. It's nice to have. All right, let's move on to actually setting up our tumbler to getting to tumble. Let's set up our first barrel for stage one of tumbling. So I have my coarse marked barrel out here, and then I have um, Lake Superior agates that are raw in a variety of sizes. So I have smaller stuff that'll act as fill, and then larger rocks, and these will of course be the more beautiful specimens, but you can find a few beauties out of the smaller stuff too. So we're gonna pull off our washer and lid system here. And what we want to do now is fill the container up about two thirds full with rock. And again, we want to mix the variety of sizes because that helps the rocks tumble against one another. If you had all large size rocks, they would likely not tumble as well because you wouldn't have smaller pieces to kind of tumble up and get in between them as they are rotating. So it's important to have different size materials in your barrel. So let's go ahead and pick out a few of these. And uh, that guy's not an agate, let's set him aside. This one, this one might be really pretty once it's tumbled. We'll just kind of pull out a few handfuls. That's a nice red agate there. That's what Lake Superior is known for with all the iron ore we have in the area. So here's a look at what I have in here so far. I'm gonna pull out a few of the more medium sized agates here. And then I'm just gonna take some handfuls of these smaller filler pieces, you know, lots of smaller chips, but these are, are great material to help fill up the rest of our barrel. All right, now that it's filled up, I'm gonna go take it and fill it up with water, and I want the water line to come up to almost the tops of the rocks. Now we have the water filled up in the container. Remember, we only wanna fill about two thirds full because we do need space in the barrel for the agates to tumble against themselves. Because again, that's the motion that causes them to polish. Now that we have it filled up with water, we can go ahead and add our grit. Um, you can oftentimes add the grit before the water too. That'll help keep it from floating right away. But for three pound barrels, I usually use about four spoonfuls of grit. Um, if you're using a smaller barrel, obviously less grit. Larger barrels will need more grit. Um, depending on what sources you read, the rule is anywhere from about one to two spoonfuls, tablespoons um, of grit per pound of rock you're tumbling. Um, I have found with my, my past tumbles that four spoonfuls is good for my three pound barrels. And you wanna keep it in the baggies because they make a mess. Let's 
Let's see if I can do this behind the camera without making a terrible mess. That's one. That's two. Three. And four. Okay, once we have our rocks, water, and grits in place, we can go ahead and seal up our canister. And if at any point during this process, you know, you've gotten like water or dirt or grit around the edge of the barrel, you're going to want to make sure you wipe that off so that you can get a nice tight seal. So work that down in there. Make sure it's sealed nicely. Put on our cap, our washer, and then we'll screw it all shut. And this should just be hand tightened. Don't get in any tools to help you tighten it further than that. All right, our course container is ready. Go ahead and load it into your model. And now let's go ahead and get our third stage agates ready to go because these have already gone through the first and second stages. So take our second barrel, which is my fine barrel, and we'll get this opened up. And we're essentially going to go through the same steps with this barrel as we did with the first one. And because these agates have already gone through a couple stages of tumbling, I'm going to be a little bit more careful as I place the big ones in so that they don't clack against each other too hard and fracture. So you can see here that we are about two thirds full. Now as a reminder, your rocks are gonna get smaller as you tumble through the different stages. So if I had felt like the level of the rocks was a little bit too low, I could either fill the rest of the way with rocks that were already you know, polished stage one and stage two and I had set aside previously and kind of saved them to be fillers, or I can use some of the ceramic or plastic bead fillers, as we talked about before. And for this stage, we want our aluminum oxide 500 grit. And get our correct spoon here for measuring it out. And this stuff is a little bit more of a fine powder, so this one's a little bit easier to scoop rather than pour out. One, two, three, four. And you'll notice that it doesn't have to be exact. All right, let me go get some water for this barrel. We now have our stage three barrel filled with rocks, water, and grit. 
time to seal it up. And again, I wiped down the edge of the inner rim and the lid to make sure I'd have a nice seal. And just like that, we're ready to tumble. I would recommend tumbling probably in your basement or out in the garage because these machines do make a little bit of noise because they're tumbling rocks. So I'll get this plugged in, show you guys what it looks and sounds like, and then I'll see you in a couple of weeks when we open up our barrels and check out our rocks to see how they're doing. And it's been one week since we've been tumbling on stage three, so let's grab this barrel, head outside with our bucket and our strainer. So I've already got the cap off the top of the barrel here, and when pulling this last piece out, sometimes it helps to break the seal here, because pressure can build up as they tumble. But you want to work this out. And here's what we look like. So this muddy mess is called a slurry, and this is why we're outside with a hose. You do not want to dump this down your sink or any indoor plumbing because it can harden like concrete. So please, rinse this outside and dump this in, you know, the backwoods, dirt alley. Just don't put it down your indoor plumbing. And so you'll see why it's not required, but it is helpful to have a colander at this point because I can dump this out and easily catch all my agates here. And now it's easy to rinse these out. And of course you'll want to wash your barrel, barrel out really well, including the lids and caps to make sure you get all of the slurry out of here. I won't show you guys that step, but just, you know, rinse it off with water really well, get out all the crevices. See if I can get my hose to cooperate here. I like to start with a general rinse just to get a lot of that mud off. And you can see here, already these are looking really nice. We just did finish stage three as a reminder. So this was the pre-polished stage. So we will have one more stage, which is the polish stage after this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with my hose and kind of spray these off more individually, specifically the bigger ones that maybe I left with a little bit of pitting on here. So I want to make sure that I get any grit that still remains cleaned out so that it doesn't mess up the polish stage. So you're just going to go one by one, use a hard spray on your hose, and then hit all those pits to make sure that they're all cleaned out. So I won't make you watch this entire process, but once I'm done rinsing these all out and have my barrel nice and clean, I'm going to go back inside and then I'm going to set the barrel up for stage four. So again, I'll put all my rocks back in my clean barrel. If they don't fill up the container to about two thirds full, I'll add some of those plastic pellets as filler. Or if I had set aside rocks from previous tumblings, you know, stopped at stage three because I didn't have enough, I could then add those in to complete the batch to a full two thirds barrel. I'll add about four teaspoons of the polish powder. I will fill it up to the top so the water is just about the rock level. And then I'll put it on the tumbler for one more week and 
that will be the end of this batch of rocks. It's now been two weeks that we've been tumbling our stage one rocks. We're going to take our barrel outside to clean them off to see if we want to move on to stage two or continue tumbling at stage one. Meet you outside. I've already got my lid popped and cleaned from the barrel here. And now we're ready to take a first look at our stage one agates. And this is honestly probably one of my favorite stages to clean off because they go from raw to, you know, two weeks of having its first tumble. So it really starts to show you what these agates might look like when they're done. It's like the moment of reveal. So when cleaning off your stage one agates, before you go ahead and do that deep thorough cleaning of them all, you know, take a look at what you have going on because this will help you determine if you're going to keep going with your stage one tumble for another two weeks or if you are ready to move on to stage two. And this is really a personal preference. The first stage of tumbling is really the most intensive tumbling. So if you want your agates to be more rounded and to have less of these pits, you really need to take care of most of that in the first stage tumbling because it's that coarse grit that is really going to help grind out those imperfections. And again, this is a personal preference. I personally like a little bit of shape to my agates still and I don't mind if some of them have that pitting still because I think it gives character to the final polished agates. So this one looks like it's going to be pretty dark. Not much going on. We have a little bit of striping there. This one is heavily pitted. And you could also decide that you want to split some of these agates up. Maybe half of them are great and you want to take them to the next stage. And the other half, like perhaps this one, you want to tumble it a little bit longer. So you can go ahead and separate them out and continue some agates at the first stage while progressing the next, the other batch onto the second stage. Again, it's up to you. For me, I think I like the look of everything that's going on. Oh, that one's gonna be really fun. And I'm gonna progress all of these onto the next stage. So what I'm going to do, just like with the last batch, I'm going to go ahead and clean these up individually. Make sure I spray down into any of the rocks that have pits to get any grit out of here. And then I'll clean my barrel out, you know, just using my water and water in my hands. Nothing fancy, nothing special. And then I'll take it back inside. I will add my four teaspoons of the stage two grit, which is the 120, 220 fill the water line back to the top of the rocks and then put it back on tumble. And again, stage two, typically about a week, stage three, one more week, stage four, the polish is one more week. So we will get these ready to keep going. Oh, that one's going to be a beauty. Look at all the colors and stripes on that. I hope that's picking up on camera. And remember, because it's been like two minutes since I told you, don't dump the slurry down your indoor plumbing. It'll harden like concrete. Don't say I didn't warn you. One more tip before I wrap up. I would highly recommend keeping a rock journal. Here on screen you see my rock and roll journal. And this is helpful because, trust me, your memory is not as good as you think it is. Having a rock journal helps you keep track of the dates that you start your tumbling and it can help you know when to move to the next stages. You'll see here that I have date, time, purpose, notes, and oil. It isn't necessary to have all of these columns, do what works for you, but I like to have this, you know, notes are helpful as you start to kind of figure out, you know, whether you like two or three or even four weeks for tumbling that first stage. I like to have the oil column because that helps remind myself when I last did maintenance on my rock tumbler. 
to ensure that I keep it working well. So make yourself a rock journal, do it on your computer, do it on your phone, or even whatever works for you, I would recommend it though. After four stages of tumbling, you'll end up with a batch of lovely looking rocks that you can then display, turn into jewelry, make whatever you want with them. So if you guys have any questions about the tumbling process, let me know down below in the comments. I'd be happy to walk you through more steps, more information. You know, rock tumbling is a fun hobby. It gets you out enjoying, you know, hunting, exploring, all kinds of cool things that you can find out there. And if you want to see more of my agates tumbled, let me know also down below in the comments and I can show you more batches, especially the ones that we were just working on together. There's all kinds of cool things to find. And remember, you don't have to be limited to agates. You can tumble other rocks as well. So I hope you guys enjoy your tumbling and we'll see you back here next week.